This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another fantastic Starbound modding tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you all how to make this custom monster spawner that allows you to wire it up to a switch or proximity sensor or whatever you want to wire it to and allows you to spawn the custom monster of your choice. You can see I have some high level testing monsters here. I've gotten a ton of requests for this thing so I'm going to teach you all how to make your own. Let's get to it. First thing you're going to do is go into your Starbound Mods folder. Now, just in case you're watching my mod tutorials for the first time and you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the first one because I'm not covering anything that I've covered in any of the others. So you're going to go into your Mods folder. You're going to create a new folder. You're going to name it whatever you want to call your spawner. I'm going to call this one Spawner 2 because as you can see, I already have a custom spawner labeled My Spawner. So we're just going to hit Enter and confirm that. And then we're going to go in there and uh, we're done with that for the second. Now we're going to go over to our Unpacked Assets folder. All right, here we are in our Unpacked Assets folder. You're going to want the Objects folder. Folder. So we're going to double click that and then you're going to scroll down till you see spawner and then you're going to double click that. Okay, so this has the items in it we want. Now we need to go back and create this hierarchy. So we need an objects folder and then inside that folder we need our spawner folder. So let's head back to our mods folder in our spawner 2 folder and let's recreate that hierarchy. So we're going to create a new folder. We're going to name it objects and then we're going to confirm that. Then we're going to go inside that folder and we're going to create another folder and we're going to call it spawner. And then we're going to go inside that spawner folder. Okay, now back to the unpack assets folder all right here we are back in our unpacked assets folder now what you want is this right here the monster spawner dot object and you want the monster spawner dot png those are the only two things you're gonna need out of this entire folder and uh, and you're good to go so we're going to copy both of those or drag and drop those over into our spawner folder now we're back in our mods folder we need to rename both of these so I'm just gonna rename this to spawner 2 and then I'm gonna rename the PNG to the same thing okay now we are going to open up the object file in the text editor of our choice and that's going to give you this now we need to give it a custom name otherwise your starbound will crash so we're just gonna call it spawner 2 now I'm not gonna tell you how to um, make a recipe for this or anything like that because I've already showed you how to do recipes before so keep this in mind whatever you name it when it comes time to spawn it in and test it out so like I'll just have to type spawner 2 that's the name of the object then you can configure your description to whatever you want, your, sh your short description to whatever you want. Um, the race doesn't really matter. You can make it printable or not. So you can make one of these, scan them, and then they should show up in your printer. Or if you're in admin, you should be able to just see them in your printer. Uh, category is spawner. We're going to leave that the same. Price doesn't really matter too much unless you're making this for like uh, some RP server or something like that. Then you may want to change the price. Um, I'm just going to leave that the same. And then icon, you're going to leave this the same. The inventory icon that's, that is already linked back to a file we didn't copy over. If you want to change this, you're going to need to copy over that as well and then change it and change its name. I'm going to leave that the same because the inventory icon doesn't really matter. The image icon here, we're actually going to rename that because I'm going to make this one a custom image so we can tell it apart once I start spawning it in from the other one that's in the game already. So we're just going to change the image to spawner 2. Leave all this other stuff the same. Don't mess with any of this stuff here. That's, that's stuff you just don't really need to mess with. So the important stuff that you're going to really want to mess with is down here at the bottom where it says spawner. This is the stuff that's going to configure how the spawner works overall. So we got monster types. You can put whatever monster type you want in here. So if you want to spawn a specific monster, you can do that as well. Um, I'm actually going to change this one up 
So what we're going to do right now, it's set for two different types of monsters, but I only want it to spawn one type of monster. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of these brackets because if we only have one type of monster, we don't need those brackets. If you wanted to spawn multiple different types of monsters, you just want to have a whole plethora of monsters come out of this thing, leave the brackets, add a comma here and then a space and then continue adding whatever you want make sure it is in the quotation marks and then add the monster names and you can just keep doing that as much as you want as far as i know i haven't tested it out i don't know if there's a max limit but uh yeah so what we're gonna for our purposes today however we're actually going to remove this one we're going to remove that comma and remove both of these brackets so this is just going to be a single monster spawner and i'm actually going to have this spawn the mother pop top so we're just gonna paste that in there and then we're gonna look at the levels you can actually change what levels and it tells you everything here that you pretty much need to know I'm gonna go through each of it with you but it has the descriptions here on what you do for each of these things so anyway uh, we can change the levels we can have it vary from 1 to 10 or we can spawn a, a specific level so I'm just gonna leave actually you know what let's let's do a, a, a static level as well let's get rid of these brackets let's do level 20 let's make it let's make it a bear to deal with so it'll be a good good for testing then next up we have the monster parameters this can be anything you want to customize your monster I'm not gonna get into this a lot now because I'm gonna get into a whole monster parameters thing later on but you can set parameters to increase health and stuff like that and you can actually find these parameters by looking at other monster files so I'll show you that real quick we're back here in our unpacked assets section and we're just going to double click on the monsters folder and then here's all of your different monsters and let's take a look at the walkers and let's see what's something that's got some decent ability well let's just look at the adult pop top so then you're going to want the dot monster type and then you just open that in your text editor and if we come back over here to our text editor so here are the base parameters so any of this stuff can actually be copied over there um, this these are all of your different monster parameters that you can use to customize your monster to your liking basically you can have it have different health have different uh, behaviors do damage on touch all of that but we'll cover more of that when we get into custom monster spawning for now we're just gonna keep this pretty simple so we're gonna leave the monster parameters um, the only one they have is aggressive and they have that set to true the position is where the monster is gonna spawn in in relation to the actual spawner so we're just gonna Gonna leave that the same because we want it to spawn where it is but you can change this if you want like if you were making a custom map or something you could bury these underground and have them spawn way above ground or something like that and this is your position variance this is basically the size of the area that they spawn in at random so you can make this big and then it's going to change up uh, how they or where they spawn at in relation to the spawner once again just unless you're doing something super custom I suggest just leaving these the same these these are you're not gonna really want to change these frequency this is how quick you can activate it I'm actually gonna change this to 0 0.5 so it has a random range between the time that you set and it was set to five seconds and five seconds so that means it was always going to uh, have a cooldown of five seconds. I'm actually going to change that to both of those at 0 0.5. So it's basically a fifth of a second instead of five seconds. But you could actually change that and have it spawn at different intervals. So we could put like this first one at five and this second one at 10. And you know, it would spawn anywhere from five to 10 seconds, or you could do one to 10 and anywhere from one to 10 seconds. So you can actually put a variance in time there. Um, but we're gonna make them both the same so that the frequency is the same so I should be able to hit the button every 0 0.5 seconds or activate it with whatever I activate it with every 0 0.5 seconds this one is important here the stock because if you don't change this number you'll only be able to spawn five of these before the monster spawner disappears you want to make sure you change this to negative one that's infinite and it tells you right here total number of spawns 
negative one for infinite. So this is gonna allow you to use the spawner over and over and over again. Next up we have the trigger. We want wire. This is going to allow you to wire it up. And you can see that it tells you your other options here to interact, uh, break or null, which is the periodic. But we want wired for the purposes of this tutorial because this is the one you all keep asking me about. So I'm showing you how to make the wired version. Um, interact would be if you go up to it, you highlight it and you hit E. Break is going to be, of course, when you break it. And then, of course, the null is the periodic. So this is out of sight. This only spawns when the player can't see it. So this is going to spawn like when you're coming up to it. Uh, if you're making like a custom app or something like that and you want these to spawn and the player to not see the spawner. So it spawns to say one monster and then disappears, which you could easily set up and you don't want the player to see the actual spawner, you would set this to true. So as the player is running up to it, when they get in a specific range, that is when the um, thing activates and then it disappears, leaving you with the monster and you never see the actual spawner. We're gonna leave this to false because we, we wanna see the spawner. And then the smash on break, I'm gonna change this to false. This means that when you break it, you actually get the item back It true. You don't actually get the item back. It just destroys it. Okay, so now that we have all that done, we're going to uh, save it. And that should be it. It should be good. But I'm going to actually customize the PNG file, like I said. So I'm going to go back and uh, do that real quick. You can just edit that in whatever your image editor of choice is. Okay, so once you have everything done, it is the moment of truth. You are going to go back to Starbound if you already had it open. If you didn't already have it open, you're going to open Starbound and hope that it loads. If you already have it open, you're going to type slash reload and uh, hope for the best because if you did everything right it should reload if you did it wrong it's gonna crash on you and my starbound did indeed crash because I forgot the quotation marks around wire here so when if you're following along uh, I had typed in just typed in wire you gotta make sure you have those quotation marks a good thing to do with this whenever you're doing this kind of stuff is um, find a JSON proofer on a website. You can just Google uh, JSON checker or JSON verifier or anything like that. And your first three options should work. And then you just copy and paste your code in and it's going to let you know where you screwed up at. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't check this like I normally do and I miss the quotations around the wire here. So make sure you do that and then make sure you save your file. Okay, we're back in Starbound here. So now everything should work fine because I mean it loaded up so it should be good now. And we're just going to type in the slash spawn item spawner two or slash spawn item whatever you labeled your spawner as and hit enter. And then it should give you your monster spawner. So then we're gonna go over to our inventory here and right here it is. And you can see I put the custom graphic on it. Uh, I think we got block protection on here. Okay, now we should be able to place this. So there you go. And you can see that it does have the wire point and we can connect it to our button here. And every time we hit it, we're going to get a bunch of pop tops because the signal lasts longer than what I put the cooldown for. So we're gonna get three pop tops every time we spawn this and these things are going to be able to take a ridiculous beating because they are such high level pop tops. I'm actually gonna have to break out a more powerful weapon to kill them because my spear doesn't do nearly enough damage to handle these things. They, they're kind of crazy and they have stupid amounts of hit points. Honestly, unless you're doing like some serious weapon testing, level 20 is probably too high. You could probably get away with like level 10 would probably be high enough. Anyway, so that's that's pretty much it, folks. That's all there is to it. If you want to change it so you don't get the three spawns because that that trigger lasts too long, I think I think pushing these buttons is a second, so you may want to put it at just a second, and that should get you one per button push. Or you could put a proximity sensor so when you get close to it, it automatically just starts spawning them and has a ridiculously high cooldown. Whichever you prefer, I've given you the knowledge. You can go out and make all the custom spawners you want now. 
And I think that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank all of you all so much for watching. You all are absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for all the awesome comments and the support you've been giving me. Before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to my Firestarter crew. Thanks so much for hitting that notification bell and being the first to comment. Also to my Patreon supporters, thank you for all of your support. You all are amazing and you really help out the channel a lot. If you would like to help support this channel through Patreon, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought. If you're shy and you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.